Top five pond plants to prevent algae and promote crystal clear water. Number one, water iris, which I have actually got planted here in my bog filter. Now this is a marginal plant, so if your pond has shelves, get it on that top shelf. Uh, basically, it just likes to have its feet wet. And what you're gonna wanna do with your water iris is to plant it in gravel. Now, when you pick up your water iris from your local pond shop or nursery or wherever you're getting it from, it'll probably come in a plastic planter like this, and it will probably be planted in aquatic compost. Now, what you wanna do is get rid of all that compost, use your hose pipe, spray it all off, and replant it in just gravel. And the reason you wanna do this is because by planting it in gravel, it's gonna force the plant to pull all of its nutrients from the water column itself. And the reason that this is gonna help with algae is because algae grows when there is excess nutrients and excess sunlight. So the water iris is gonna help take care of that excess nutrients when planted in just gravel. On top of all of that, it's just a nice looking plant. It's gonna flower for you, which the bees are gonna appreciate. And it will die back in the winter though. So what you wanna do is at the end of the season, just cut it right back to the bottom, but it will grow back the following spring. So nice plant it's going to really help take care of them excess nutrients in your pond next up is the water lily now i've got a water lily in all of my ponds and it is an absolute classic pond plant you can't have a pond without a water lily now the water lily is the only plant that i'm going to recommend that you do plant in aquatic compost and this is because water lilies are heavy root feeders and their job isn't to remove excess nutrients from the water their job is to shade the pond and stop that excess sunlight from getting down into the pond. And as I mentioned earlier, excess sunlight is one of the two major causes of algae in our ponds. So with the water lily taking care of the excess sunlight and the water iris taking care of the excess nutrients, we're well on our way to stopping any future algae blooms. That being said, the water lily is a classic plant and it is gonna help with algae through its shading capabilities. So next up on the list is water lettuce. Now this is a floating tropical plant. I've got some in this pond here. Also got some in my other pond. And this is a great plant for preventing algae because it both provides shade and uses up excess nutrients from the water column itself. So as I mentioned earlier, these are tropical plants and they will usually start to become available for sale sort of end of spring, beginning of summer and they will die off at the end of the season and they won't overwinter or anything like that, so you will have to throw them away unless you happen to live in tropical climates and I'd imagine they'll be fine all year round there. A good alternative to these, if you can get it, is water hyacinth. That has been banned here, so I can't actually get that, but I would actually prefer to have that because I think it's a nicer looking plant. But yeah, great plant for pulling out nutrients from the water column and at the same time providing some good shade to the pond. Also, just on a little side note regarding water lettuce, if you ever want to breed your goldfish, they're really handy in doing that. All you have to do is put a few of the water lettuce plants in your goldfish pond, wait for your goldfish to spawn, and they'll attach the eggs to the roots of the plant. Then if you just move the plant to a different like nursery pond, you'll end up with a few little baby goldfish. Uh, but that being said, on to the next plant. And that plant is typha. Now I've got some typha growing just here and I've got it in all three of my ponds. And it works in a very similar way to that of the water iris by using up the excess nutrients in the pond. And really you want to treat it exactly the same way as the water iris. It's a marginal plant and again you want to just plant it in gravel which is going to force it to pull all of its nutrients from the water column itself. And I have actually even heard that this plant is so good at cleaning water, it's used in water treatment plants. That being said though, a couple of little side notes on the typer. Very similarly to the water iris, it will die back in the winter. And again, all you need to do is put it right back down to the bottom there and it will grow back the following spring. Finally, number five, and my personal favorite in the fight against algae, watercress. And the reason this plant is my personal favorite in the fight against algae is because it not only uses up nutrients from the water column and shades the pond, it grows really quickly. And that means it's gonna really pull them nutrients from the water column and really stop algae in its tracks. Now, as far as planting goes, you wanna plant it marginally, just in gravel, exactly the same as the typha and the water iris. And if you can find an area of high flow, it will very much love that. That being said though, I love this plant so much, I've got it growing in all my ponds. I've actually just added a little bit into here just the other day. And I've also got it in my main pond in this bog filter. 
and I've also got it in this bob filter and they're doing a great job at really keeping that water clean and algae free. That being said though, if you do want to learn how to plant watercress in such a way that's going to really supercharge its growth and really help prevent algae, you might want to check out this video here because that is going to help you do just that.